In 1859, Charles Darwin published his book On the Origins of Species, which not only changed the course of history, but that of humankind. Ever since humans came into existence, it was believed that life on Earth was due to the grace of the divine. But it was Darwin who first gave the theory of evolution and redefined the origin of human beings on the planet. Charles Darwin has been one of the most influential scientists and intellectuals of history. However, living in Victorian England, his theories have been tainted by the racial and sexist attitudes of that period. Darwin believed that females were not strategically as mature as males were, especially in terms of the animal species, and hence were relatively passive. This observation stemmed from the fact that males in the animal world adopted various means to attract the females for mating purposes, whereas the females would just pick and choose the best among them. One cannot say with surety if Darwin had the same opinion about the Homo sapiens too, but the time and place he lived in may lead one to think so. Charles Darwin's patriarchal worldview led him to downplay the role of female variation in most of the animal species, assuming they were stagnant and never made any new choices. In fact, he went on to state that women were not intellectually equal to men. In a letter in 1882, Charles Darwin wrote, I quote, I certainly think that women, though generally superior to men in moral qualities, are inferior intellectually. And there seems to me to be a great difficulty from the laws of inheritance in their becoming the intellectual equals of man." Unquote. In his 1871 book, The Descent of Man, Charles Darwin wrote, I quote, the chief distinction in the intellectual powers of the two sexes is by man attaining to a higher eminence in whatever he takes up than woman can attain. Whether requiring deep thought, reason or imagination, or merely the use of the senses and hands." Unquote. Darwin added, thus, man has ultimately become superior to woman. Darwin was, one could say, surrounded by sexist men. The British scientist Angela Sini, in her book, Inferior, How Science Got Women Wrong and the New Research That's Rewriting the Story, writes about this aspect. Charles's cousin, Francis Galton, generally known as the father of eugenics, produced beauty maps that graded women in Britain from the ugliest to the most attractive. At a time when women were seeking the right to vote, Sine writes, Galton, Darwin and other scientists hardened sexism into something that couldn't even be challenged. Darwin's humanitarian attitude and portrayal of his loathing of slavery were a fundamental influence on his view of human evolution. However, he was seen embracing racism and even racial extermination in his work. Despite being opposed to slavery, he saw genocide as a progressive force in human evolution. In his book, The Descent of Man, published in 1871, Darwin claimed, I quote, at some future period, not very distant as measured by centuries, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate and replace throughout the world the savage races. 
unquote. Darwin was a troubled man and suffered from severe emotional problems for most of his adult life. Darwin wrote about his mental and physical problems extensively. For example, in 1875, he wrote to fellow scientist Robert Hooker, I quote, You ask about my book and all that I can say is that I am ready to commit suicide. I thought it was decently written, but find so much wants rewriting. I begin to think that everyone who publishes a book is a fool." Unquote. Darwin had frequent episodes of panic attacks due to suffering from agoraphobia and also exhibited traits of OCD. He frequently discussed his health problems in his letters and in his autobiography. He once wrote, I am forced to live very quietly and I am able to see scarcely anybody and cannot even talk long with my nearest relations." Unquote. Darwin once complained that speaking for only a few minutes to the Lenian society brought on 24 hours vomiting. In some ways, one could describe Darwin as having sadistic impulses as well. In the 1958 edition of his autobiography, published by his granddaughter Nora Barlow on page 44, an incident described provides us with an insight into this aspect. I quote, In the latter part of my school life, I became passionately fond of shooting. And I do not believe that anyone could have shown more zeal for the most holy cause than I did for shooting birds. How well I remember killing my first snipe and my excitement was so great that I had much difficulty in reloading my gun from the trembling of my hands. This taste long continued and I became a very good shot." Unquote. The fact that his hands trembled with excitement for having killed his first bird could perhaps indicate a sadistic streak in Darwin. One wonders if his passion for killing may have, in part, motivated his ruthless survival of the fittest theory of natural selection. So that was the flip side of Charles Darwin.